beast, didn't they? Chuff to bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I'm just concentrate on not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boat. Covered him, man. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel and welcome to the workshop. And what am I up to today? Well, <laughs> I thought I'd show things from a slightly different angle, different perception. Most of the films start off with an introduction on the beach, rods rigged, tripods set up, everything good to go, and, and you're in amongst it. But then you start to think about it and you think, well, if you're trying to learn, if you're watching YouTube videos, if you're watching these films to try and learn how to even get going, we're missing out a whole chunk. And the chunk we're missing out is the prep. So for anyone that's wanting to watch a YouTube video to get straight into watching people catch fish and, and on that, this isn't for you, I'm afraid. But if you'd like to know how I prepare my kit, how I set my tackle box up and what I'm taking, because I'm going to show this bit today and then tomorrow I'll, I'll, I'm going to film a session using all the kit that you've seen now. So I think it's well worth going through the layout and the setup of a tackle box. And I'm using a straightforward standard Shakespeare seat tackle box. And inside of it, we've got trays. So we move some of this stuff out of the way. Camera gear, I've got two trays in the top. Um, I've got newly purchased today. Convinced, talked into it by Dean at Tommy's Tackle and Bait. <laughs> That's got my um, reels in it. And in another conversation that we had, um, I've got three of these. And three of these perfectly sit inside of a seat tackle box. So between tackle, reels, rig, wallet, some extra lighting, I carry some extra stuff for filming, so there is a little bit of that. Um, yeah, this is it. This is how I stack my tackle box. So inside one of these, it's got my weights and it's got a pair of scissors, a small disgorger, a large disgorger, it's got my turbo flame lighter for my hand warmers. It's got my Solingen nail clippers. It's got a new roll of bait elastic, although I've got no intentions of using it. A pair of dog leg or bent forceps. I am targeting flounder. Um, and a small selection of weights. A couple of continentals, a couple of light grip leads, four ounce grip leads, and some flat breakaway leads. So inside that one, which is possibly one of the heavier, that is one of the boxes. That sits in the bottom. And I'll give you a camera shot in a minute so you can see them in the bottom. In the second one, some people are looking at this going, what all the compa? I like to be tidy. I like to be sorted and squared away. In this one, I've got my digital scales, my weighing sling, and a Gerber. Reason why I like a Gerber as a generic go to. I'm ex military and all of the booties, all of the Marines, didn't carry Livermans, they carry Gerbers. If it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Um, I have got a Leverman in comparison. I've had this one a long time. Um, the larger 100, real robust tool that one, really good tool, but generically, to throw in amongst all this stuff, I've got myself a canvas case Gerber. I don't know which Mark one that is, what it says, does it say on it? Suspension, is that a thing? Gerber suspension tool. It's just got everything on it. Good sharp edge, pliers, all those other bits and pieces. And that is all that's in that one. Plenty of room for more scope if I did. So that one goes in the bottom next. And then last but not least, and the one that's important for today, is all my head torch to make sure that my head torch is looked after. Spare batteries. I've got a set of batteries on the wall on charge at the moment, having their conditioning charge. So that one, 
quite expensive head torch. You, know, you can get cheap head torches, I know that. I saved up my pennies and bought that Fenix one. Um, and that is the three. So I'll give you a shot now of how they sit inside the tackle box. Now considering I only found out about this this morning, and I bought the third one this morning, it just makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Look at that. A normal Shakespeare seat tackle box and the three boxes sat in the bottom. So that's the first layer. And what I will say is when you stack or pack your tackle box, keep the weights at the bottom. If you put the weights at the top, there are some racks you can buy and there's some gadgets and bits and pieces. Or if you put the weights in the top, it makes it top heavy and tipsy. And the last thing you want is this spilling out on a beach with everything just flying out. Hence why it's all in the bags and also the fact that it keeps things separate and if you pack it the same way every time you always know where everything is and I have got a left a right and a middle that it's a little bit OCD I know um, <clears throat> and then this was I only purchased this today hence why I'm a bit excited about showing it all and inside this bag which is midwater luggage I've got some spare shock leader I've got the two 7HT Mag Millionaires and a spare cloth. I put a spare cloth in the bottom. <laughs> There's nothing worse than going beach fishing, for me anyway, and finding for whatever reason you've forgotten your cloth. So always having, never rely on it to be your sole cloth, as in that's the only one you've got. That's my spare cloth. <laughs> It doesn't weigh anything, it doesn't take up any room, and it helps to keep the reels from getting knocked about. So that goes on to as the next layer. I'm always carrying camera gear, so for the purpose of this exercise, that is the size of bag that everything goes in. Two cameras, wireless mics, everything goes in there. So I'm going to put it in, and then we'll get an idea of how much room and what everything else takes. One of the trays, because I'm scratching tonight, I'm going for flounder, possibly there's going to be school bass. That's my bait for tonight, already wrapped. I might just re-wrap it once more, because that, that newspaper's looking a little bit wet. So that sits in one tray, and whatever I do with my baiting up, I might take a little bit of something else. I'm undecided what else to take. I might take a mackerel, actually. Um, that is one tray. So we'll put that in. And then the last tray, for me, the reason why this always seems a little bit excessive, I suppose, is because I'm carrying extra batteries and clamps and lighting. So there's a large light, a, a clamp for the light. I might leave this one out tonight, actually. I don't really think I need that one. But you know what happens. You say I'll leave it out and then you need it. And then an anchor battery pack to run the light for longer. So that's the other tray. And a rig wallet. So I've already pre-made my rigs. Um, I've got some shop-bought rigs, because there's something I'd like to try. Tronics Pro rigs. I've got a couple of those that I'd like to try. But all the rest of these are three hook clip down. Um, the two hook loop rig and the wishbone rig, all with small hooks. So there's the rig wallet. And that goes on top of the one with the light and all the rest of it. And very, very last, I've prepared, by prepared I mean I've filled them, two 12 hour hand warmers. These are Zippo ones, I'll take one out of the bag, because it is cold, <laughs> it is, this is relative, it's this time of year. Um, 12 hour hand warmers. So just before I go, when I'm loading up the van and getting ready, I'll light these, light these, let them heat up, and then by the time I get there, it's only half an hour or so away, um, I'll have two lit, nice warm hand warmers. And just thinking, I've got my big cloth that's gonna lay on top. My seat cushion has got a chopping board. That's bought commercially, I bought that from a shop. It just so happens to fit perfectly 
inside the seat cushion. Seat cushion goes on top of the trays, keeps everything captive and we lock it down. And that is the box, good to go. The only difference there, bottle of water, a little bit of munchies to eat, possibly a flask. I don't think I'm gonna have time for a flask tonight. I'm gonna to be fishing quite hard. Um, a flask might be wasted. That's the box. So we'll have another quick look and we'll take it by layers. So first and foremost, the first layer. That's with everything held captive. And then the seat tray. Rig wallet, lighting for filming tonight, bait tray, so we'll take both of those bait trays, both of those trays out, and then we look at the next layer, there's enough room for a flask and for some food, and any others, if I wanted to put some additional waterproof kit in there or something like that, that's the bag for the camera gear. That's the bag with the two reels in. And that's the first layer with all the gubbins. So that is, just put it all back. It's very, very personal. Everybody loads their tackle box up in their own special way. <laughs> I don't, be, I don't begin to imagine that that is the perfect routine for everyone, but that is my tackle box as it stands. I suppose the next bit, so that's the tackle box, that's all the business end. Just get a feeling of the weight because it's, it's pretty packed quite light, even though I'm carrying additional camera gear and that's, that's okay. Um, I've packed my beach shelter down into its bag. Usually I leave it half packed and just wrap it around and, and tie wrap it or, or strap it to my rod bag. I'm not taking the rod bag today. So that will lay across the top of my box. I might even strap it with some bungee straps. And I'm not using today a rod bag. So I'm just using these twist sticks, bendy bits with the uh, tripod on the back, two rods, uh, they're fire blades inside, uh, really robust Ian Gold's bags. And there's the rods. So that is all of the kit, the bait, the rigs, all of the other bits and pieces that we need. I've got batteries on charge, put that out of the way, put it to one side. It's a routine. If you follow the same routine, if you pre-prepare everything, and I've got a few little odds and ends, nothing of any specific, just the spares. So really, I'm gonna put the bait back in the fridge, because I don't want it to spoil. I might rewrap it a little bit later on. I've got some stuff on charge for filming. And other than that, as he nips away to the fridge, Nips away to the fridge, bait in the fridge. That's me all set to go. All I'm waiting for now is the tide. 20 past nine high water, so two hours up. So so if we get there for seven, quarter to seven, fish the two hours up, two hours the other side, 10 I'll be home before midnight. I'll be home before we ring in the new year. It's New Year's Eve. That's the target. Regardless of how it fishes tonight, home before. I should be home a bit before really, shouldn't I? I'll try and get home for about 11 o'clock. Maybe fished hour and a half, hour after high water. So tomorrow, the follow on from this film will be me actually fishing the session tonight. So two parts really. All the kit packed away, ready to go. Tomorrow, how the fishing session went. So I hope you join me again tomorrow. Take care, tight lines, happy fishing. From me, from here, it's goodbye. Um, it's all exciting. I'm getting excited. Go fishing. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.